Genesis 38, 27 through 30. I'm kidding. In Exodus 33, 18 through 23. Genesis 38, 27 through 30. And then Exodus 33, 18 through 23. It came to pass in the time of her travail that, behold, twins were in her womb came to pass when she travailed that the one put out his hand and the midwife took and bound upon his hand a scarlet thread saying this came out first it came to pass as he drew back his hand that behold his brother came out and she said how hast thou broken forth this breach be upon thee therefore his name was called Perez and afterward came out his brother that had the scarlet thread upon his hand and his name was called Zerah Exodus chapter 33 and we're going to read verses 18 through 23 very popular text Exodus 33 18 he said I beseech thee show me thy glory and he said I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy and he said Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And uh, this morning when I woke up to pray, this, this message, I preached it one time at our church. It just began to consume me, and all day long it's grabbed my attention. And I just want to preach to you tonight from the subject, God's Identical Twins. God's Identical Twins. Lord Jesus, have your way. Thank you for the refreshing wave of the Holy Ghost that we just felt a few minutes ago. We know you're here. There was no doubt about it. You have already manifested your presence. We know anything is possible. Now let the word get into every house, every marriage, every home, every battle. Help us tonight with revelation to see things that we've never seen before. Open our eyes in the spirit, God. Use me and get me out of the way, I pray in Jesus' name. If you love him, would you clap your hands to him one more time? Praise the Lord. And you may be seated. When we pray, we think we know what we need. And we're living in the situation, and therefore we aim our request based on the information that we currently have. We, we know what God needs to do. We know the pathway that God needs to come through. And so we aim the prayer directed at what knowledge we have about the need and therefore we assume we're praying the will of God because the need is so real and we know what the answer is supposed to be and oftentimes what we think we need is close to what we need but not exactly what we need in the kingdom of God there are a lot of things that mirror each other that are very similar but they are not the same they're identical twins like faith and trust and sometimes you tell your neighbor when they're going through a battle you just need to have more faith in God when maybe they don't need to have faith because faith believes God can do anything but trust says if God doesn't do anything I'll still be here when it's over they're twins they look the same they, they're very similar but sometimes we get them mixed up humility and meekness Meekness means to be gentle, and humbling yourself is not always gentle, but sometimes we say, I, I've just got to be humble about this and have the right approach, and really, really, we need to be meek about the situation. They're very similar, but they're a little bit separate. Praise and worship. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise, but before we leave the building, we should somehow get to the Holy of Holies where we're worshiping him, not for what he's done, but for who he is. Praise takes me to the word, and the word takes me to the worship, because if I can worship after hearing the word, I've gone beyond. 
healing, healing and miracles. I just want to be healed. And then we're wondering why it's not instantaneous. Because healing is a gradual recovery. A miracle is an instant work of God. And therefore we say we, we need a divine healing right now. And then we leave the altar and you still feel the pain in your leg. But then next week it's a little bit better and a little bit better. You thought you needed a miracle, but you called it a healing. It's similar, but it's different. Grace and mercy. What are they? We seem like we know. But in the Old Testament, the word mercy is kindness, goodness to a reproach or shame. In the New Testament, mercy is to help one in affliction. Grace in the Old Testament means favor and acceptance. In the New Testament, it means joy and pleasure. In other words... Mercy is what you need when you're in trouble. Grace is what you need when you need favor. Mercy is what you need when you're trying to get out of something. Grace is what you need when you need to get into something. They're identical, but oftentimes we pray, uh, we pray the wrong thing. And grace is not mercy. And mercy is not grace. Even though they work together on the same team. One deals with your past. And another introduces you to your future. Mercy deals with my yesterday. Grace introduces me to my tomorrow. Are you, th uh, are you thankful for the mercy and the grace of God? So they're identical twins. It's like in the Bible, these boys are in the womb and, and one puts his hand out and the, the nurse said, this is the, this is the firstborn. So she takes a scarlet thread and wraps it around his hand. He pulls his hand back in the womb and the other boy comes out. So I'm going to ask you a question. Which was born first, mercy or grace? Because grace is introduced to us first in Genesis 6 when Noah found grace in the eyes of God. But mercy didn't come till Genesis 19 when Lot was leaving Sodom and Gomorrah and the mercy of God came upon him. And so we understand that you've got to get to heaven through grace, but it's mercy that gets you out of hell. And so mercy shuts the door to yesterday. Grace opens the door to tomorrow. But which one's really there first? The first boy put his hand out, but then pulled back because... Zerah had to come out first. In other words, yes, we're supposed to go to heaven through grace, but you don't go there without getting out of something. Mercy delivers. Grace discovers. Bartimaeus is on the roadside. Let's just go. Bartimaeus is on the roadside, and he said, Jesus, thou son of David, have Now, mercy gets me out of yesterday. Shouldn't he be saying, give me grace? I need a miracle. I need my, my eyesight, my future. But Bartimaeus is not saying, give me my sight. He's saying, get me out of the position of being a beggar on the side of the road. I, grace doesn't do that. Mercy does that. Mercy's what gets you out. Some of you are only in here right now. But for the mercy of God. Before I ever ask for grace for a hookup, I better start asking God for mercy because I cannot expect the grace of God without the mercy of God first. That's why Jesus was so amazing. He never needed mercy. He never needed to get out of anything. But in Luke 2.40, the Bible said that the grace of God was upon him. 
Because Jesus is always about your tomorrow and not about your yesterday. Mercy protects and grace connects. In Genesis 39, the Bible said, talking about Joseph, that the Lord was with him and showed him mercy. But when he went before Pharaoh, the Bible said Joseph found grace in his sight. You need mercy in the dungeon and in the prison, but you need grace to get into the palace and your destiny. In other words, no matter what, what God does for your tomorrow. Never forget what he did yesterday. Never forget what he's brought you from. Never forget how he brought you out. It's mercy that connects me to grace. Would you praise him for his mercy and for his grace? My favorite story in the Old Testament is the story of Moses' 40-day fast. And as Moses is in the presence of God, talking to him, coming off the mountain, fasted 40 days, he comes down and he begins to talk to God about grace. Three times he says, if I found grace in your sight, would you do this? Would you do that? The problem was, while he was expecting God to give grace, Israel was creating a mess where they needed mercy. They were worshiping a golden calf. And here he is telling God, well, we need grace to go forward. But God can't give you grace. When you're stuck in something that you need mercy in. God, just hook us up with our blessing. I can't hook you up because you've got an addiction that you won't conquer. And until you get mercy right, you never understand what grace is. That's why I'm just going to be myself. But the charismatic movement that pushes grace to everyone, just come as you are and stay that way, does not understand mercy. Mercy brings you out of who you are and what you were. And grace takes you into your tomorrow. Too many people looking for grace dancing around the golden calf. You better have a Moses on a mountain looking for mercy for you if all you want is grace. You better thank God every day for your pastor and your pastor's family because I'm telling you, some mercy only comes when the man of God is climbing a mountain and you're just hoping for some grace when you really need mercy. Oh, I feel that right there. Oh God, we just want grace. Overlook our faults and mistakes and addictions and just give us grace. Just connect us to what we want to happen. Give us our blessings while we don't change. Attitude of the prodigal. Just, just give me my stuff. That's why I love it when people come in and truly know how good God's been. I know this is going to be rah rah for a second. Just sorry for the shallow moment, but some people really do roll their eyes at all the shouters and worshipers because they they just don't understand. And once they get around this for a while, they'll calm down. I hope you never calm down. I hope you never shut up. I hope you never get over what the Lord has done for you. I hope you never stop testifying. I hope you never stop witnessing. I hope you never stop telling somebody if it had not been for the mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. Shut up. One preacher said, mercy's like a broom. It sweeps up behind you. All the mistakes that you made, don't think you're all that. It's the mercy of God that gave you that job. It's the mercy of God that didn't let you go to jail. It's the mercy of God that kept you alive. It's the mercy.
And here's Moses saying, give us grace. Show me your glory. Show me your face. Show me tomorrow. And God said, I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy and I'll be gracious. You're asking the wrong thing. No man has seen my face and lived. You're asking for a revelation of the future. But clearly, you're not out of your yesterday. So tell you what, I'm not going to show you tomorrow. I'm going to show you yesterday. And God said, behold my back parts or my past. And here's where Moses wrote the story of creation. Because Moses wrote the book of Genesis. Here's where Moses wrote the story of Job. Because Moses wrote the book of Job. It's when Moses was in the mountain thinking he needed grace for tomorrow. And God said, you need to remember, I've done some stuff you have no idea. I wish some of you would realize that God's done some things that you've never praised him for you never thanked him for you don't even know it happened and so to see your tomorrow you need to understand your yesterday you need both Some, someone shout I need both, I need both. Hebrews 4 16 if you've got that let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace if you have to find grace but you better hold what he's saying is hold on to mercy while you're looking for grace while you're looking for the job and you're looking for the favor and you're looking for the blessing don't forget what he's already don't forget how good he's been don't forget how merciful he's been don't demand the job thank him that he's carried you through the wilderness And oh, by the way, if grace and mercy ever had a baby, they would name it peace. Because in 1 Timothy 1-2, 2 Timothy 1-2, Titus 1-4, 2 John 1-3, you find mercy, grace, and then peace. Because peace is the product of mercy and grace combined. Oh, I'm going to preach it. Here we go. See, if you only... Have, if you only understand God's grace and what he's doing for you now and you don't understand his mercy you'll always be looking at your past in fear no matter what God's doing well this could come up I just killed the shouters you know why you're thinking that because you know grace but you don't know mercy because when you know mercy, you know the devil can't just bring up anything he wants to. Because mercy is a blanket that covers you. And blessed are the merciful. Some of you are afraid and you live in fear because you have not been thankful enough for the mercy of God. And if you're worried about your yesterday, you need to start praising God for his mercy because mercy brought you out. So if you understand grace but not mercy, you live in fear. If you understand mercy but not grace, you're stuck in your today with no hope for tomorrow. Well, yeah, God did get me out, but I guess there's all, all he's got for me is this. Well, I'm thankful he saved me. Still broke. Oh, I just read somebody's mail. Sorry. This is part of my notes. Yeah, he was good. He did good. He's helped me, but, but I don't know what he's going to do tomorrow. If you're worried about tomorrow, 
you don't understand grace see anxiety kills your peace and when you're anxiety when you have anxiety you're living tomorrow today and so anxiety says fear tomorrow when you fear tomorrow you've not remembered grace what are you saying you're not alone in your today if God brought you out he will bring you in through grace so when you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow start thanking God for the grace because grace is what takes you out of the wilderness and into the promised land through grace are you saved by faith you're saved by grace but when you have both When you know he's been good to you and he's going to be good to you tomorrow, you've got peace that passeth all understanding. I know I'm going through hell, but I've got peace. Why? Because I know he's been merciful and I know he's gracious. He gave me identical. If you have peace, I'm done. Stay standing. If you have peace, you've been shown mercy and you've received grace. Now, if you got money, you know what's all I'm talking about there's a storm. People are talking about you. Things are crazy. But there's this whisper. It's all going to be all right. I've got it. When you've got that, God only gives you that if you've understood grace and mercy. In other words, I give you peace because if you know mercy, you won't take the credit. You'll know you don't deserve it. And you'll know it wasn't your connections or your ability that connected you to it. So when you understand that you are nothing and you are just made in my image and I am everything, then you have perfect peace because you begin to love my law and perfect peace comes by grace. I know it's Wednesday. I just want to shut some demons up right now. I want to shut some whispering spirits up right now that are trying to tell you God's going to let you down and God's going to forsake you and God's going to let the enemy overtake you. The devil is a liar. God's got identical twins and they're looking for you right now. One is named Mercy and the other is named I don't know which you're up in the altar which one you need more of here's the signal you need more of one or the other which one are you less thankful for are, are you thanking God for what he's doing right now and what he's going to do you get grace but if you've not thanked him for all he's done lately how good he was 30 years ago oh let me go back how good he was 2,000 years he stayed on a cross because I would need mercy in the darkest hour he poured out his spirit because I would need grace to get into heaven. And if it wasn't for the mercy and the grace of God, where would we be? I want you to put the anxiety down at your feet right now. I want you to put the fear down right now. And I want you just for a few moments on a Wednesday night to reach up and grab mercy by one hand and grab grace by the other and thank God for his identical. He knew when he made this world the days you would need mercy and the days you would need grace. And I release peace in this altar right now. I release peace in your financial struggle. I release peace in your marriage battle. I release peace in your job situation. I release peace in your family. I release peace to your questions. I release peace to your doubts. I release peace. God, God. 
I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He said, I know the grace I've got planned for you tomorrow. I know what I've got planned for Eastgate. And what God has planned for Eastgate, no devil in hell and no human in Texas or in this planet can stop what God has planned for the grace of God. Because where sin did abound, grace has much more power. Maybe instead of telling God what you need and bringing up the situation, just categorize it. Does this fall into grace or mercy? Here's a secret to favor. Know what you need grace in. Here's a secret to protection. Know what you need mercy in. And you just beat the devil just now. You don't have to know all the details. God, show me a vision. You don't have to show me. If I just need mercy, that's all I need to pray. God, give me mercy. God, for the Holy Ghost right now. Some of you, with your backslidden children, you need to start praying for mercy. I speak mercy on every backslider right now. That's left Eastgate. In the name of Jesus, I declare the mercy of God in their car, in their work, in their home. And for Eastgate's future, I pray for the grace of God to unleash in this area. For the grace of God to give you the things you need. Categorize the need. It either falls under grace or mercy. If it's trouble, it's mercy. If it's blessings, it's grace. And when peace comes upon you, not the answer, not the money in the bank account, not the kid in the altar praying in the Holy Ghost, when peace comes upon you, meaning no matter what's going on around you, when you get that peace, you need to thank God for whatever the category was. He's letting you know, I've got the mercy for your baby. And I've got the grace for your future. Mercy in my dilemma. Grace in my destiny. They're identical. They were released at the same time. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. You may never heal me, but if you could just get me out of this, It was God's mercy that made Bartimaeus' coat fall to the ground and God's grace that opened up his eyes. If not for your mercy, if not for your grace, don't know where I would be today. Let me show you something. I'm going to close and give this to Pastor. We have a family that moved to our church from Washington. Crazy story. The guy hard on drugs and alcohol, and his wife had been horribly abused in her childhood, and a couple years ago her sister commits suicide, and, and they're in the world, just living in the world in Washington. And she's watching charismatic preaching one day, trying to hope he's, because he would get possessed and say crazy stuff, and hoping he'd come by and he, she's watching this this charismatic preacher on TV talk about being baptized and he was in Oklahoma and the, the, the husband comes in and they have three kids husband comes in he's like oh he starts listening to it he's like man I, I need to do that book me a ticket to Oklahoma I'm gonna go to that charismatic church and get baptized doesn't know anything 
She said, okay, I, we know one family in Oklahoma. She had met a Pentecostal family in the United Pentecostal church. Maybe they'll pick you up and maybe they'll take you to that. She doesn't know a thing. Maybe they'll take you to the charismatic church. <laughs> so he gets on the flight and she calls them and they pick him up. And he's like, we got to go to this church. Like, yeah, before we do. And they teach him an eight-hour Bible study on the oneness of God and baptism in Jesus' name. He changes his mind. says, don't take me to the charismatic church. Take me to your church. So they baptize him in Jesus' name. They give him my fast-forward book. He goes back to Washington. He reads, and he's like, I don't know where this guy is, but we're going. They move to Dallas. Sell their land. They're living in a motorhome right now. They come to the church. She gets baptized. They all get the Holy Ghost. Wait. They're serving God with everything they have. See, that's mercy, okay? But then he tells us, I've never met my birth mom from Columbia. Two days before he tells us that, we put in a new music director who's from Columbia. I didn't even know this. The music director who does not speak any English goes to Brother Troy, the new convert from Washington, and says, where are you from? He said, I was born in Columbia, and I've never met my birth mom. Alfredi, the music director, says, what part of Columbia? He says, I think I know where your mom is. He said, no, there's no way. He said, give me a day. One day later, God connects Troy, 31 years old, to his mother he's never met. Grace. See, they work together. Mercy brought him out of Washington. Now we're working on flying his mother, who was weeping on the phone, telling him, it wasn't my fault. They took you from me. I just want to meet you. That is why God does what he does. There's always more to it. I just want you to know there's more to your miracle than you've even if you knew what God's really doing right now off of the Holy Ghost if you knew what God was up to right now you wouldn't be in depression you wouldn't be crying yourself to sleep you wouldn't be throwing a pity party you would dance on a Wednesday night and you would shout because you would know God's mercy connects me to God's grace